Okay, here's a fun circuit problem for you. Uh, so it is two light bulbs connected to a battery with a capacitor and a switch. And spoiler alert, I actually have this here. I have the whole setup right here. Uh, so the question is, when the switch is closed, what will happen to the brightness of these two bulbs? And I'm representing the two bulbs with resistors down here. Um, and yes, I have used paper clips and magnets and batteries, and I do have a switch right here. So I'm, I'm gonna actually do this. And this is a one farad capacitor. I'm gonna actually do this. So what I want to do is to set this up conceptually, then do it and see what happens, and then model it numerically. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with this, I promise you. Okay, I'm gonna get back to that in just a second. You can kind of see it as a little teaser. So in the circuit, oh, and the capacitor starts off uncharged. In the circuit, uh, as in any circuit, we have two things that have to be true. The, the loop rule has to be true, so that the sum of the voltages around any loop uh, has to add up to zero, and the current has to be conserved. So the current coming into a junction has to be the current coming out. Let's start with the current first. So if this is my battery and that's the positive side, I have a current coming out of here. I'm gonna call that I1. Once the switch is closed, it's gonna come to this junction, and so some of the current's gonna go this way, I'll call that I2, and some is gonna go that way, I'll call that I3. And then on this other junction right here, they're gonna combine back together, and so this will be I1. Looking at that junction, I have this, I1 equals I2 plus I3. That has to be true, that's my junction rule. Now let's look at the loop rule. I actually have three loops. There's only three currents that I don't know. So if I did all three loops, I'd have four equations, four knowns, with this being one of the equations. So I'd only need two, two loops. Let's start with this loop. I'm gonna start right here and go around this loop right here. So if I go this way, and this is after the switch is closed, then I cross that battery and so I have a voltage drop of VB. Now some people call that EMF. Uh, I write that poorly, so I'm just gonna call it VB for the battery voltage. And then I'm going to go across here. Now I'm going in the same direction as the current. And so I get a voltage drop of IR, but that's I3R. So it's gonna be minus I3R. And then over here I have back to I have a different current, but I'm going in the same direction. And so that's gonna be minus I1R. And that has to add up to zero, and that's another equation. Now I have, I'm gonna pick this is my final loop. Uh, so let's assume that if I have current coming out of here, then this side's gonna be positive and that's negative once it starts building up with the charge Q, uh, whatever that charge may be. Uh, and the voltage across a capacitor is, is uh, delta VC is just Q over C. So the more charge there is, the greater the voltage. Uh, so as I move around this way, I'm gonna go in from the positive side to the negative side. So that's gonna be uh, the negative of minus minus the plus of a negative drop. So it's gonna be negative Q over C. Now I'll come back over here. I'm going in the opposite direction as the electric current. So it's gonna be a positive uh, potential drop. So it's gonna be plus I3R and that has to equal zero. So there's my three equations uh, and I can use that to answer the question of what's gonna happen here. So let's start right here. At T equals zero, uh, I have no charge on the capacitor. So if there's no charge on the capacitor, then this is going to be zero. If this is zero, I can even rewrite that as I3R equals Q over C. So if Q is zero, then I3 is zero. So that means there's no current going through this first bulb. Right when I close that switch, there's no current going through that. What about this? Well, I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, or up here it's better to look at it. Let's look, solve this for I3. Well, let's, we can just look, we don't need to solve for it. So if I3 is zero, then I1 has to be some, some number, right? So, but there will be a current. And that will, so it'll, when I close the switch, this will be off and this will be on. But what happens over time? Over time, the charge will start to build up on the capacitor. So I will have a charge on that. So Q will increase. So if Q increases, I3 increases. So as this begins to get charged, I will start having a brighter and brighter bulb right there. But this, what happens to this bulb? Well now as I3 increases, these two have to add up 
to be equal to the battery voltage. So as I3 increases, that means I1 would have to decrease. So here's what's going to happen. I close the switch. This starts off, that starts on. This starts getting brighter, that starts getting dimmer. Eventually, when the charge across this is equal to uh, the voltage across uh, I3, well, it reaches some constant steady state, and then these two bulbs will have the same brightness because I I2 will go to zero. You can get that up here, I guess. I2, well, that's fine. So that's what's going to happen. Now, there's another way to think about it. It's one of the things to think about is a capacitor at when it's uncharged, it acts like a short. So it's like it's not even there. So if I have no capacitor there and just a wire, then the current's going to get here and it's all going to, it's going to short out that resistor. So it's all going to go through here. Over a long time, a capacitor acts as an open circuit. So it's like that's an open switch. If that's the case, it's just all going to go straight through there. Okay, let's do it. I know you've been waiting for that. Let's do this. Okay. So here's my capacitor, my two light bulbs, my switch, and my battery. I'm going to close this and we're going to watch the brightness of these two. Okay, they're not super bright, but I think we can tell. So here we go. Ready, start. So you see that one starts off and that one's bright. Now, as uh, it goes on, that one start. that's on now. I don't know if you can see it, but it's starting to get a little bit brighter and that's getting dimmer. And this is getting even, now, come on, you can see this. You have to be able to see this one, right? Uh, that one's getting dimmer, brighter, dimmer, brighter, dimmer, brighter, brighter. Can you even see? It's on. And, and now they're about the same brightness. They may not look that. There you go. Oops. That was weird. Okay. So there you go. Now, just for fun, I'm going to, I'm going to turn off the switch. You can see what happens. This one's going to dis, that's weird. Discharge. So that one's still bright and it's dimming down and it the capacitor discharges through there. Okay. How do we model this numerically? So in order to do that, uh, we need to, uh, do first one thing. We remember that current is delta Q over delta T. It's the rate of change of charge. But which charge and which current? So if I want to talk about the charge on this plate right here, then I can say delta Q, I'm going to call Q the charge on that plate, delta Q over delta T is equal to I3, I2, right? Yeah, is equal to I2, I3, I2, I2. Because that's the charge flowing onto that. So let's take this and plug that in up here. Okay. Actually, let me start with a new sheet of paper. Okay, so I have this. I2 is delta Q over delta T. Now I'm going to put that into my uh, equation for I1 equals I2 plus I3. Now these are all going to change with time, right? Um, so the idea here is that if I take a small time interval, then I can assume during that time interval the charge is constant. And then I can use that to calculate all my values. Okay, so if I put in this over here, I get I1, I'll subtract I3 from both sides. I1 minus I3 equals delta Q over delta T. Now I want to get rid of I3. So if I look at my other equation, uh, I3 is equal to, um, I3 is times R is equal to Q over C. That's what I had before. Yeah. So I3 is equal to Q over RC. If I put that in over here, I get I1 minus Q over RC equals delta Q over delta T. Now I can uh, substitute in, I'm trying to remember what I did before. Um, delta Q over delta T, I1 minus, well, I use this. I, I, th there's, there's multiple ways to solve this. So let's say this, VB uh, minus I3R minus I1R equals zero. That was one of my loops. 
And if I use that, I can solve for I1. I1 is going to be equal to uh, VB minus I3R over R. That's just solving that. Okay, so now I can substitute in delta Q uh, for I, I3. That's what I did right here. Yeah, that's kind of a weird way to do it. That's, I think I did it a different way. Okay, I'm getting myself confused. Okay, so let's just take this and solve this for delta Q. Okay, I'm gonna do it a different way. So if I solve this for delta Q, I get delta Q equals I1 minus Q over R, all of that times delta T. So this says that if I know the initial current I1, which I can find, and I know the charge on the capacitor, which I can approximate as constant, and a time interval, then I can solve for the change in Q. If I know the change in Q, then I can find the Q at the next time interval. So let's say this is Q1, the, char the charge on the plate at the beginning of the time interval. The charge on the plate at the end of the time interval is gonna be Q2 is equal to Q1 plus delta Q. All right, if I just take the charge I had and add the change, I get the new charge. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy, uh, but what about, uh, what can I do with that? Well, once I know the delta Q, I can find uh, the new charge, Q2, I can find uh, I3, right? So I3 depends on Q. So I3 equals Q over RC. So now I can find um, I1 up here, because that depends on I3. So I1 equals VB minus I3R over R. So now I have I1. Now I can find I2 from up here. Uh, I2 equals I1 minus I3. And that's it. Oops, I messed it up. So here's, here's the step we're gonna do. I'm going to start with initial conditions, uh, Q equals zero, I1 equals, if, if Q is equal to zero, the initial current is just gonna be equal to the battery voltage divided by two R, right? Because it's like this, it's like this capacitor isn't even there. So if I, if I have the loop roll right here, I can solve for I1, it's just the only current there. Uh, so then I can set that for my initial I1. Uh, the initial I2, the initial I3 is going to be equal to, well, if Q is zero, I don't need that. I need, that's all I need is I1. I need the initial I1, right? Because then I can solve for delta Q, update Q, find I3, find I1 again, find I2, and then update time and do the whole thing again. Okay, so let's do that in Python. So I do need some values here. Let's say VB equals three volts, uh, R equals 10 ohms, C equals one. Delta T, DT is 0 0.01. Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. Okay, switching over here to Python. Uh, I've already got a window up. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna start off with, first I'm gonna make a graph. I'm gonna do, uh, let's do this the right way. G1 equals graph, uh, X title equals time in seconds. Uh, y title equals uh, I in amps. And let's put the width at 500, or uh, yeah, height at 250. Now I need two graphs. I'm gonna plot the current F1, well I'll call it F1, F1 equals G curve, uh, color equals color dot blue. I'm not gonna give it a label, we can remember. F3 is the current for current three. G curve, color equals color dot red. Okay, now I need to uh, set my values. So Q is equal to zero, VB is equal to three, uh, C is equal to one, R is equal to 10, uh, T is equal to zero, I need a time, and DT is 0 0.01. Now, I'm going to, I need to know my initial current, right? I need I1, is that what I said? I1 is equal to VB 
divided by 2 times r. That's my initial current. While t is less than, let's run it for 10 seconds. Uh, and I'm going to do it, uh, I'm not going to make it animate, it's going to go as fast as I can. Now I'm looking at my sheet over here. The first thing I'm going to do is to calculate dq. dq equals i1, which I know, minus q divided by r times dt. So this takes the value of q, which starts off at 0, and uses that to calculate dq in that short time interval. It assumes that Q is constant during that time, which it totally is not, but that's fine. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, look at my sheet over here. I'm going to update Q. Q equals Q plus DQ. So again, this is a this is a make equal to sign. It's not an algebraic sign. So it says take that value of Q, add DQ, and that's your new Q. Next, I'm going to calculate I3. I3 equals uh, Q divided by R times C. Uh, and I just updated that, that Q. And the order doesn't really matter too much if you do a small enough time step. Uh, now I can calculate I1. I1 is VB minus I3 times R divided by R. And I just calculated I3. Now I can calculate I2. I2 equals I1 minus I3. And now I can update time. Oops. I'm going to update time. Sorry. Uh, update time. T equals T plus DT. Now I'm going to graph I3 and I1. So F1 dot plot T I1. F2 dot plot T I3. Let's see if this sucker even runs. And to remember, I3 is red. And nothing happened. Oh, can't find F2. Because there's not an F2. F3. There you go. Okay, so this says that uh, I3 starts off as uh, 0. I3 was the current in the, yeah, the current in the bulb that was with the capacitor. It starts off as 0 and increases. The current in the uh, other bulb decreases and they reach some constant value. Let's run this a little bit longer. Let's run it for 20 seconds. And there you go. They, they end up at the same brightness. That's exactly what we saw. We did it numerically. A uh, little bit of hiccups there. But I'm pretty happy with the way that it came out and, and that's that. So I'm going to include this code down below and uh, that's that.